This lesson is for section 8.6. Today we're going to be working with functions that have more than one independent variable. So given a real world situation where we have more than one variable, we're going to find general and particular equations that relate the variables and use them as mathematical models. So our goal is again to build up to the fact that we're going to work with real world um, problems. Okay, let's get started with our first two examples. Now these are not word problems, so they're not real world situations, but I just wanna make sure that we're able to set up um, an equation when we have more than one independent variable. So this is just practice before we start with the word problems. So in example one, it says y varies directly with the square of x. So clearly we have one independent variable right here, but it also says that it varies directly with z. So there's our second independent variable. And it also includes the fact that it varies inversely with the square of w. So if we want to write a general equation, we have to relate all of these variables. We have four total variables. So y is going to vary directly with the square of x. So we, we write that like we typically would, so kx squared. And then when it says directly with z, we're just going to multiply that all by z as well. And because it's inversely with the square of w, I'm going to divide by w squared. So that's going to go in the denominator. So this is the general equation. So notice I only have one k value, okay? Now, in part B, we're actually going to find k. So notice they have to give you all of your variables in order to solve for k. So we're going to just plug it right in. So if y is equal to 12, we have 12 is equal to k is unknown, so I'm going to leave it k. Uh, x is 2, so I'm going to square 2. Um, z is 5. And w is also 5. So I have, this is my, my um, equation that I can now solve in order to find k. So I want to isolate k, but one of the things I can do here is make this a little bit easier on myself, especially if I don't have a calculator. Um, because you have 5 and 5 squared in the denominator, I'm going to cancel out one of those 5's. So really this is 2 squared over 5. So now the equation is 12 is equal to 4k over 5, okay, because 2 squared is 4. And if I want to solve for k, I just multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by 5 fourths on both sides of this equation. So here it's going to cancel, leave me with k is equal to 5 fourths times 12. Let's see, 4 goes into 12 three times. So I get a k value of 15. Now my particular equation then would be y is equal to 15x squared z over w squared. This would be the particular equation that relates all of our variables with our known constant k. Okay, and number two, the wording is a little bit different than what we're used to because it says here, write an equation of variation where y varies jointly as x and z. Now this is the same as if we were to see varies jointly with instead of the word as. So it's the same idea here. So this is going to be a direct variation with two independent variables x and z. And then it says inversely as the square of w. So again, the wording's a little bit different, but it's no um, different how we, we write our general equations. We'll have y is equal to k times x times z because it varies jointly with x and z. Then it varies inversely with the square of w, so we're going to take over w squared. And then for part b, we want to also find k, so I will let you guys try that on your own um, and then check with the key. So make sure you write your particular equation correctly, substitute back in your k value, so you have kxc over w squared once you find your k. So that should be your final answer here um, for number two. Okay, let's get started with some word problems now. In number three, it says, when a railroad track warms up, it expands. So this idea is pretty um, familiar, I think. If you cool something down, it's gonna contract, and if you heat it up, it'll expand. Now, the amount by which it expands is directly proportional. So I'm gonna highlight some stuff here. So the amount by which it expands, this is directly proportional to the product of the length of the track section and the number of degrees by which it warms up. So here we've got um, two independent variables. So We've got our dependent variable, the amount by which it expands, and it is directly proportional to the product of length of the section and the number of degrees. So number of degrees and the length here, those are our independent variables. Um, now when tracks are installed, small gaps are left between the sections to allow for this expansion. And it says here, C sketch. Now I'm just going to help you try to visualize this because I don't have a good sketch of it. I'll just try to make one of my own. So here's, let's pretend like that's one set of tracks. Now when you lie another set of tracks, Okay, you're going to have small gaps between those to allow for the expansion of the metal. Okay, and that's kind of what we're talking about. So the width of this gap equals the amount by which the track is expected to expand. So suppose that you find that the test rail section 2 meters long expands by 0.028 centimeters when it is warmed up by 25 degrees Celsius. Now we're supposed to write a particular equation that expresses the width of the gap needed in terms of the rail length and the expected temperature rise. Okay, so let's try to define our variables and make sure we can make sense of this problem. 
Instead of using variables like x and y, I think it'll be easier for us if we just use a letter that corresponds to the word um, and the variable. So what I mean by that is if we're trying to express the width of the gap, um, instead of using um, x or y here, I'm just going to use g for the gap. So g represents the width of the gap. Oops, width of gap. Now, this variable here also represents um, the amount that the track expands. Okay, so if you read here, the width of the gap equals the amount by which the track is expected to expand. Now, that's really important here because back in our original sentence, one of the original sentences that it relates the variables together, it says the amount by which it expands instead of the width of the gap here. So we know that these are interchangeable. So the amount by which it expands really means the width of the gap. So again, to make sure you understand this problem, they're going to leave a gap between the railroad tracks. Okay, so between this section of track and this section of track, they leave a certain amount of gap here because they know that that railroad is going to expand a certain amount and they want to make that amount equal to each other. Okay, so width of gap and um, the amount the track expands, those are the same, um, that represents the same thing, okay, G. Um, now we want to express the width in terms of rail length, so that'll be a pretty easy one. I'll just do L for the length of the railroad. So this is the length of the specific track. And um, for the expected temperature rise, let's call that T. So this is the temperature, or the amount of degrees, I guess. Let's do that, amount of degrees that um, the temperature rises. So the amount the temperature rises. Okay, now let's try to relate these variables. Um, and I'll go back again to the original sentence here, because it says the amount by which it expands so again, that's G really, okay, because it means the same thing as the width. The amount by which it expands is, so equals, directly proportional. So we're going to do a K times, it says the product, which just means to multiply the, two, the next two things, of the length of the track, so L, and the number of degrees by which it warms up, so L times T. So there's our general equation. So the gap, the amount that it's expected to expand, is equal to K times the length of the track times the temperature that it's supposed to rise. So this is our general equation. So now let's try to find our particular equation. In the very last sentence here, before it asks the question, it says you test a rail section and you find that that rail section, which is two meters long, so that's giving you the length, so L is two, and meters, put meters on there, it expands by 0 0.028 centimeters. Now remember, expanding and gap, the, uh, the gap is the same thing, so this is really G, which is equal to 0 0.028 centimeters, okay? And that happens when it's warmed up by 25 degrees Celsius. So this is the temperature. So T is the amount that it, the temperature rises, and that's going to be 25 degrees um, Celsius. So if we solve now for K, we're going to plug in G is 0 0.028 centimeters. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the units in a second, but right now we'll just solve it like we normally would. We have K times the length, which is 2, times the um, degrees, which it warms up, which is 25. So now if I solve for K, um, remember, make sure you store this, but you'd have 0 0.028 divided by 50. Okay, so K is 5.6 times 10 to the negative fourth. So this is something you want to make sure you store. Okay, so let me erase here. Um, finally, then, your, your actual particular equation is going to be G is equal to 5.6 times 10 to the negative fourth um, times L times T. So this is our particular equation. Now we're going to use that model here to um, answer some additional questions. Now I just want to mention real quick that the units here are not the exact same, so we're doing centimeters and meters. Um, if you wanted to get super accurate, you could convert 0.028 into meters or this two meters into centimeters, but we're just finding a K value that re relates our, our data right now. So this K value um, is for when you plug in a length that's in meters and um, you get an output that's in centimeters. Okay, so that's that's kind of, you have to keep it consistent. So if they give you something that's not in meters, you need to convert it into meters because this particular uh, K value is when we relate meters and then we get an output of centimeters. Okay, so that's kind of important um, as we move on to the next problem. Okay, now the next question says, how wide of a gap is needed for a 30 meter rail that's installed at 20 degrees in the tropics where the rail temperatures can get as high as 60 degrees Celsius? So here we're trying to find the G, the gap, the width of the gap, okay? And we are given the length, the length is 30 degrees, or I'm sorry, 30 meters. Okay, so this is good. It's in meters, which means that we can plug it right into our equation. Remember, because our particular equation that we found, G is equal to 5.6 times 10 to the negative fourth 
times L times the temperature rise. And again, this was supposed to be in meters, and then we get an output of centimeters. Okay, so it has to stay consistent with, with that. Otherwise, our K value changes if we if we change around those those um, inputs. Okay, now anyhow, um, be careful when you define T, because T here is not 20, it's not 60, it's the difference between them. It's the degree change, right? It's the amount that it rises. So it went from 20 degrees up to 60 degrees, so that's a 40 degree difference. So those are our variables, and now we'll just solve for g. So we have g is equal to 5.6 times 10 to the negative fourth times 30 times that 40 degree um, temperature rise. And so we'll get an answer, 0.672 centimeters. So that is the amount the track is going to expand. Now the second question here, it says a 20 meter rail is installed in the Antarctic at a temperature of negative 40 degrees and then it can get as high as 32 degrees Celsius. So this question here, just make sure that you understand that you're going from a negative all the way to a positive. So the degree difference here is actually 72 degrees as opposed to just, um, you know, I don't know, 8. Some people will write 8 degrees here because they'll see 40 and 32 and write that as 8. So it's an actual degree drop, or I'm sorry, degree increase of 72 degrees. So we'll use L is 20 and the temperature rises 72 degrees. Um, and then I would like you guys to go ahead and just type that right in your calculator and check with the key. We'll move on now to C. Okay, in part C, it says, if a single rail with no gaps were laid in a straight line from San Francisco to New York, which is approximately a 4,100 kilometer distance, by how much would it expand when the temperature goes from 10 degrees to 30 degrees Celsius? Okay, so let's make sure that we understand what it's even asking for, um, and then we also can get the correct information from the word problem. So it says here, you want to find out how much it expands. Remember, the, the amount that it expands is equal to the width of the gap. So really, this is solving again for G. Okay, This is asking the same thing. What is the width of the gap? Now, um, they do give you two pieces of information. One is pretty easy, I think, to see here. They have a, um, your T is going to equal 20 degrees because that's the amount for which it warms up. So it goes from 10 degrees to 30 degrees. Now, for the length, um, you don't want to just use 4,100 kilometers. Okay, because this is not in the correct units. Um, remember, when we input it back into our particular equation, when we were trying to find that particular k value, we used um, meters for the length. So we have to make sure that this is the same input, otherwise we can't use that k value that we found. The k value would be different if we had plugged in something in kilometers. So in this case, you are going to have to change that, so you have to be careful about that. Make sure that you use the same units that you originally used when you found your k value. So here I'm going to um, multiply by um, a thousand because there's a thousand meters in one kilometer. So if I multiply that by a thousand, I'm just going to add three zeros. So really, whoops, this is four million one hundred thousand meters. Ooh, that's a long, long track. Okay. So um, I can now just plug it right in. So I have that k value. I already know my k value, so I'm just going to write k instead of writing it all out again. And then the length here is that very large number. Okay. And the amount that it warms up is 20. Okay, now when you get your answer, this is going to be in terms of centimeters. Remember, that's uh, that was our original particular equation. It gave us a gap of that width was in centimeters. So here we get an answer of um, 45,920 centimeters. Okay. Now in this case, what I would do, since that's a huge um, amount and it's hard to kind of visualize what that's supposed to be, I would change that and put that into meters. So this is really, if I divide now by 100, because that's how many um, centimeters are in one meter, if I divide by 100, I end up with 459.2 meters. So that would be the width of your gap. Okay, so as you can see from our answer, 459.2 meters is a huge amount for that train to expand, the, the railroad track to expand, which is why they don't build railroad tracks without doing gaps in between small sections, because um, otherwise the, the railroad track will be totally useless, it'll buckle and, and cause a lot of problems, because you don't want to have that big of a gap in between your tracks, okay? All right, let's move on to the next problem. Okay, and number four, um, it says the amount of weight your thigh bone will, will support is directly proportional to its cross-sectional area. So the amount of weight is directly proportional to the cross-sectional area. Now this area varies directly, so the cross-sectional area varies directly with the square of the diameter of the bone. Now we're supposed to write two different equations here. One of the general equations will express the weight in terms of area, and the other equation will express the cross-sectional area in terms of diameter. 
Okay, so let's try to write our first general equation. And in this case, we want to express weight in terms of the area. Now, if you go back to the first sentence, it says the amount of weight your thigh bone supports is directly proportional to the cross-sectional area. So I'm going to let W equal the amount of weight your bone supports. Okay, and let's do C is the cross-sectional area. Okay, now if we just read off right, right away that first sentence here, um, we know that W is going to equal K times C because it's directly proportional to the cross-sectional area. Okay, so um, W equals K times C. Now for the second general equation, it asks us to express the cross-sectional area in terms of diameter. So this time we're going to use, again, C we already have defined, but we want to define D, I guess, as diameter. So D is the diameter of the bone. Okay, and if we express that, that's coming from the second sentence here because it says this area, meaning the cross-section area, varies directly with the square of the diameter of the bone. So here we have C is equal to K. Now this K value is different than the original K value that we had, so I'm going to call that K1 here and K2 here because they're two different constants, okay? So this is directly proportional to the square of the diameter of the bone. So we're going to do D squared. So here are the two general equations, okay? Now in the second part it says by composing the two functions in part A. Okay, so that means we're going to put these two equations together. We want to derive a different equation that expresses the weight of your thigh bone in terms of the diameter. So in this case we don't want to see C anymore. We don't want to see that because we're not trying to talk about cross-sectional area. We just want the weight of your thigh bone, so W, in terms of diameter. So those are the two variables that we need to see in our new equation. So in other words, we're trying to eliminate C. Now if I start with our first equation, we have W is equal to K1 times C. Now C, this variable here, is equivalent to that new constant times diameter squared. So what I'm going to do is use substitution. And this sometimes is hard for students to see. Hopefully it's not for you. But we're just going to substitute that value here in for C. So now my new equation is W equals K1. Instead of writing C, I'm going to write this entirely new um, expression here, which is K2 times D squared. Now if you can see, we have W weight in terms of diameter. Okay, so that is our new equation. Um, and again, it's, it's eliminating the C just by using substitution. This is a technique that we're going to use in the next lesson when we start doing composition of functions. So I just wanted to introduce you to you today, but that's the general idea. So we just substituted a value in. We replaced C here with a new expression that also is the same as C. So the cross-sectional area has been eliminated from this, and now we only have it in terms of the weight and the diameter. Now part D says, tell in words how the weight varies with the diameter. So as you can see here, the weight is directly proportional because this K value here, this K1 and K2 value, that is um, just a new constant, okay? So it's not a variable at all. It's just two different constants coming together to form a new constant. But the weight is directly proportional to the square of the diameter of the bone. Okay, and that's um, just a mini lesson on composing functions, and then we'll work on that a little bit tomorrow with a more complex example. All right, that's the end of the lesson. Nice job. Make sure you ask questions if you have any, um, and check the key on those problems that I ask you to do on your own. I'll see you guys in class tomorrow.